I'm delighted to have with us as my guest, former President Lyndon Baines Johnson. Good to see you, sir. You said yesterday at uh, lunch, uh, Mr. President, that uh, you had flown along on every one of these missions, uh, but those you watched uh, on your television monitor at the White House, and this one you saw for the first time in person. Awesome sight, wasn't it, sir? It certainly was, Walter. It's a great thrill. Uh, I had the feeling that great concern for the outcome of this flight. We haven't reached the end. It's just the beginning. You never get the feeling uh, on one of these blast-offs, uh, sitting in a room watching them on the camera, that you get to uh, seeing them in person. And as uh, they took off there this morning, I thought about how fortunate we've been all these years. If we can do all of that in such a short time, I wonder why it is that uh, we can't uh, put that same effort to bring good and peace to all the world. I thought uh, as we went in the sky there this morning of the Space Act itself and its declaration uh, that we were engaged in this endeavor to bring peace to mankind. And uh, I don't believe there's a single thing that our country does, our government does, our people do, that uh, has greater potential for peace than the space effort. As I walked out uh, from the blast off, I saw that special section of ambassadors there from all the nations of the world, all taking such great pride in America's effort, all entertaining such great hope for the success of the uh, this mission. And I recall that uh, after Apollo 8, uh, uh, I sent uh, to the leaders of the world a picture of the Earth taken from that mission. And the response was universally favorable and hopeful. And they all expressed great admiration for our people. Hey, you know, uh, when you conducted the search for the first head of the Space Agency, the National Aeronautics and Space Agency, uh, as the leader in the Senate and later as the Vice President, and you found, came up with James Webb as the head of that agency, the man who put this tremendous management team together. Uh, Mr. Webb has said since then that he thinks that this is one of the great spin-offs of this program, is the management techniques, the systems engineering that made this thing possible. And he'd like to see that sort of systems engineering and management applied to jobs like peace. Have, have, uh, have you talked that over with him and thought how that might be done? We talk about if we can spend $24 billion, we can do any to get to the moon, we can then do anything. Well, how do we translate that into action and do anything? Mr. Webb just returned from a trip abroad, and he was telling me of the many statements uh, that he heard from heads of state about our peace program and the potentialities that it offered to, uh, in that field. Uh, I was always told that uh, you ought to, in selecting a manager for an operation, pick the best man you could, give him the implements he needs, tell him what his objective is, and then let him get the job done. That's what President Kennedy did uh, in the space effort uh, back in 61 when he made this commitment of this country and asked the Congress to join in that commitment. We had, uh, President Kennedy had already appointed Mr. Webb uh, to direct it. Then he gave him the objective and we're on our way today to realizing that objective. We must have uh, other objectives. Uh, this peace effort is, uh, is the principal one, I think, in the hearts of every human being in the world. All three billion of them can't understand why we have to go on dying and fighting uh, uh, when we can do so many wonderful things. Why it is we can't learn to get along with each other. And it may be that under the leadership of the cream of our young manhood in the space effort, and uh, President of the United States and the leaders of the, the space field, that we can bring about a joint effort of some kind. 
Back in 58, I urged President Eisenhower to say to the other nations of the world, let's all join in a united uh, space program. Uh, we've been unable up to now to get other nations to agree, but President Nixon and uh, the administration very shortly will be engaged in the discussions and negotiations with other leaders. And it may be that uh, more will come out of this than we know now. Well, it's uh, certainly something we can rest our hopes in, even as we rest our hopes in those three men aboard Apollo 11. Well, as we walked away this morning, I thought of three things that uh, I felt very deeply. Concern for the men and their safety. The great awe for what I had just seen uh, as they took off. And uh, something you don't hear much about these days, but great pride in this country and its ability to set aside partisanship and differences and quarreling among its scientists and among its industry leaders and its government leaders. There's been any of that, that is, it's been held to a minimum and I know very little. But if our industrial people, these great managers of industry, if the laboring people of the country, the government, the scientists, all with the help of the Congress can get together and do a job like this, uh, there's just not anything we can't do, and there's so much that we have yet to do with the hunger in the world, with the sickness in the world, with the poverty in the world. We must apply some of the great talents that we've applied to space to all these problems.